How, how do we start this one? <laughs> I think this is it. Let's just, we, it already has started. This is it. This is it. Uh, but that feel, I hate that when people do that with podcasts. Like, oh, we already, yeah, we're already started. Uh, this is all part of it. I hate that. No, it's retro. It's Collings and Herring style. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, recorded on a MacBook with no fucking microphones or anything. Really, really. <laughs> That's it. That's what it is. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to this exciting one-off, that, that feels like it's building up way too much, um, episode of the Ginger Too Pop. big. Too big, too big, bring it down, bring it down. Um, a special one-off episode of the Ginger Beard Mark podcast. You can hear mumbling in the background there, author Robert Ring, author, comedian, mighty comedy historian Robert Ringham. As some of you will know, as some of you will not care, uh, the podcast's been on hiatus at the minute because I've been working on a film project and we had enough footage to cobble together 40 minutes to show a bunch of people. So that's what we're here to talk about, really. Is it's uh, I like you know I like to do a debrief on things uh, with the with the people that I, I went to them with. That's kind of what this is. So enough rambly starting. Yeah, enough rambly starting and we'll do the rambly middle bit, shall we? Yeah, Mark, I had a wonderful time in Edinburgh. How, how, how do you feel about it? Are you still buzzing or are you starting to come down a bit? I'm still very much buzzing, yeah. So we, um, yeah. we it's a first time experience for me. You've done bits and pieces in the past, but we we did a thing at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. We... Uh, we took 40 minutes of our film and showed it at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in front of a group of lovely, lovely people. I yeah. think it only just hit me when you just said that. We took 40 minutes of our film to the Edinburgh Festival. It only really just hit what we actually just did. Because I think the, the events of the day, you know, the actual minutiae of the day kind of eclipsed everything for me. Like the actual fun of it and the individual chapters of the day. Uh, that's what I keep thinking about. But the way you just summarised it, we took 40 minutes of our film to the Edinburgh Festival. It's like, whoa, that's, a, that's like a proper milestone in the life <laughs> of this project. So it was at the Voodoo Rooms, wasn't it? The Voodoo yeah. Rooms Speakeasy, which is a beautiful uh, classic fringe venue. I, I played it once before and we managed to sort of wangle a one-off show there, didn't we, as part of the PBH Free Fringe. So we did the usual thing, you know, free to come in um stick some money in the hat at the end if you want to kind of thing and we went around fly ring didn't we was that your first fringe fly ring experience as yeah. well yeah it's like hey. every, everything you know like first time taking a show to the fringe first time flyering at the fringe and it, and it does feel as thankless as it looks flyering <laughs> <laughs> i quite enjoyed it this time I think the thing that feels thankless for me is if I'm hanging out, if, if I'm handing out a flyer with just my face on it, begging people to come, it really does feel just, just I don't know, frightening and you're really putting yourself out there. But because this was a collaborative one and also we were able to sort of, you know, name drop the, the bigger names from the film as well, it really felt like, oh, I'm just a foot soldier in this bigger thing. So I actually quite enjoyed it. Like once that self-consciousness was lifted it a little bit, I actually quite liked it. And we were quite clever about the people we were looking for in the flyering, weren't we? Like we stood outside Tim Key's show and Simon Munnery's show and just tried to just explain very briefly and quickly to everybody what it was, thinking, look, you're our people. You're our tribe of comedy connoisseur. And um, oh, actually, we, we gave a particular comedy connoisseur a leaflet, didn't we? That's what I was going to say. So the thumbnail of this, if you're watching this on YouTube... Or, or the the title of it is kind of a lie, and I'll tell you who the most famous person I flyered was. But who was the most famous person you flyered, Rob? Oh, it was Daniel Kitson, <laughs> wonderful Daniel Kitson, <laughs> and it was great. And I wasn't bothered. You just sort of threw me at him, really. You pointed him out and went, "Look who it is, it's Kitson." And I went, "Bloody hell!" And you went, "Why don't you flyer him?" So I just bloody did. <laughs> <laughs> he seemed, yeah. I would say, nonplussed. <laughs> 
I, I think that's just standard kits and there, isn't it? From <laughs> from what I understand. Resting nonplussed face. <laughs> yeah, it don't matter, does it? How, how many things we've done over the years, we still get a little bit starstruck by a certain kind of person, don't we? Like Kitson, you know, only meeting him. Just, we exchanged, you know, tens of words and it was still a buzz, you know? Oh, That's absolutely. Pathetic, no, I, I know exactly the feeling. And it's, you know, we'll get on to it, but there was someone we spent a lot of time with while we were actually showing the film who I've met like loads of times now and email with occasionally and I still felt amazingly starstruck by them. Yeah, I, th I think we're getting there now. I think we're getting there with him now, aren't we? It's, it's becoming a bit more relaxed, but yeah, I'm still constantly looking down on myself going, bloody <laughs> hell, you know? Um, but yeah, before we before we get to that mystery, keep keep listening and you'll find out who that mystery person is. But the most famous person I flyered was uh, Terry Christian. I was, yeah. I was outside the stand three. I got no idea what was even on at the stand three at the time, but there was just this queue of people and they were probably slightly older than us. So with people who looked about our age, it was um, handing them the flyer and saying, oh, Stuart Lee, Simon Munnery, Stuart Lee, Simon Munnery. This was a slightly older crowd. And so I was going, oh, Joe Brand, Stuart Lee, Joe Brand, Stuart Lee, thinking. And, and some of them lit up a bit and was like, oh, OK, and took the flyer. But as I got halfway down the queue, I heard this like thick Mancunian accent that, I, you know, I knew a, a mile off. And uh, it was Terry Christian so I said, oh, Terry, uh, any chance I could have a selfie with you? And, and you know, 50% of it is the the whole Stuart Lee, the, the ongoing Stuart Lee joke of, you know, Terry Christian's let himself go. <laughs> was 50% of it. But 50% of it is Terry Christian's, like, really famous and it was quite cool to meet him. And... So, yeah, so then we, we, after meeting Terry Christian, we both... Uh, met up after one of Simon Munnery's gigs and proceeded to fly uh, all of Simon's audience by saying, oh, Simon's going to be in this film that we're showing in two hours' time. Simon's in this film we're showing in two hours' time. Because it's like, they're definitely the right audience. They've literally just come out of Simon's show. Yeah, literally the right audience. One of them actually said, oh, no, we've just seen him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, he'd been over he'd been over Munnery if such a thing is possible. <laughs> But then we went in and spoke to Simon and spoiler alert, Simon is the mystery person we were talking about just. But he said sort of unprompted, oh yeah, I'll see you at this in a little while. And we were we got all giddy and excited and we were like, is he actually going to come? Is he actually going to come? And he bloody did. <laughs> Bang on the start time of our slot in walked Simon with his dog. And that... <laughs> That just blew my hair back, you know. We did a little intro where you sort of set up who Anthony was and I sort of set up how much we'd worked on the film so far and give people a rough idea of what they were going to see. Yeah. And then we showed the footage. How, how many times had... Because I'd sent you, like, a slightly earlier version of the edit. How many times had you watched it when it, when it was projected? I'd watched that edit that you sent me twice. Um, although, but there were changes you made to the, the actual edit we saw yeah. on the day. Um, and some of them were excellent. Yeah, I think the um, some were pragmatic. Um, some of them were just excellent. And I think that's the way we should go with it. Um, how did you feel about the edit? I, I, it's, it's, it's difficult for me because I had, at that point, I'd seen it so many times. Yeah, you were so close to it. But... I've got to admit to just be sat there and and hearing people laugh where I've been laughing or when me and like my brother have been laughing, that felt so good. That felt so sort of reassuring and you know what I mean? I think and, that's it. Um, even given the esoteric subject matter, nobody seemed bewildered. They no. seemed like they were into it they were laughing in yeah they were laughing in the right places there was sort of um there were very different tribes of people in the room weren't there like you could sort of see these pockets of 
people sitting together. And so I was trying to keep an, you know, an eye on all of them to see how these different kinds of people responded. But the room was pretty unified. Yeah. Like out, outside the venue, these are definitely different demographics, but inside the venue, people were pretty united in celebrating Anthony, laughing at the funny people, describing Anthony in a funny way, um, moments of pathos they were with. It really felt like they were behind Anthony, behind us, and just they, they totally got it, you know? So I think we're doing all right. It really sounds like we're blowing smoke up our own ass here. I know. Is yeah, there I anything about? Bit, it's kind of a bit worrying. Is, is there any anything about this story that um, isn't isn't great, or is is there perhaps a chaos element uh, to this story, just to sort of uh, keep it keep it on our toes? A chaotic element. Um, okay, so <laughs> at the end of the the forty minutes uh, screening, we went back up on stage and we answered five questions I'd say that, that again w proved that the room were genuinely interested in what they'd seen and had proper questions you know it, it wasn't just like oh how much did it cost or how did you get Joe Brand or you know what I mean which is sort of what I was expecting is like people who just feel the need to ask a question because it's awkward if no one asks a question. I, I was very, very proud of that because yeah. I've been to so many Q&As, you know, author events and things over the years, um, where even if you've got a big name who everyone really wants to hear from, the questions are crap. You know, they're, they're, they're so often really bad. Like I saw Chris Morris at the GFT here in Glasgow, Will Self at the Mitchell Library, and the questions were just embarrassingly trivial or just ill-informed. But all of the questions we got, it was maybe about five, as you said, were just absolutely spectacular. And it, it just showed that even though they were completely new to the thing, you know, there was nobody in there who knew about Anthony beforehand, I don't think, really. Uh, we didn't stack the deck in that way. But these people were genuinely engaged. And that's a thing that, A, makes me proud and B, gives me hope that actually when we go even wider and get more people to see this, people will get it and they'll be engaged. They'll be entertained, but they won't just be entertained. They'll be interested and intrigued. And that's the aim for me anyway, or one of the aims. But anyway, well, sorry, you were, you were going to tell, tell the Well, yeah, I was going to say, element. we only got five questions. We would have got more. We w There was definitely time for more. <laughs> but from the back of the room, throughout some of those questions, um, a, a man started shouting. But luckily, that man was Simon Munnery. <laughs> yes, yeah, luckily. <laughs> and not quite content with just shouting from the back of the room, he then decided to join us on stage. Uninvited. Yeah. I would say charge the stage is what I would describe <laughs> it as. He came belting up the centre aisle with an Alsatian on a rope. Like the littlest <laughs> hobo. Yeah, that's what happened. And then, yeah, he just proceeded to sort of take over the last five, ten minutes of our, um, our Q&A, really. Which I was just... I mean, if you're going to do it, if you're going to go and do an Edinburgh show, a one-off, you know, make it memorable. That's what I say. Well, we're not going to forget it, are we? It was pretty amazing. <laughs> I mean, it's it's monary. You can pretty much do whatever he wants, short of, like, actually getting it out and pissing on the, <laughs> the loved ones on the front row. Apart from that, um, he can do anything he wants. <laughs> so, uh, and he pretty much did. So, yeah, it was a dream come nightmare, really, wasn't it? It was oh, absolutely... Yeah, I, I was just... I was so in the moment. And it's like, you know, when you've never done something before, I was like, oh, does this happen? Is this what an Edinburgh's like? You, you know, you do most of your show and then Simon Munnery just comes in and does the... End. <laughs> yeah, yeah, specifically. Is that just... Like, that's <laughs> everyone's first Edinburgh experience? It, it's a sort of sign that it's going well. It's a bit like... Um, who was it? Was it... Um, Ed Stewart, is it the, the 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 late show presenter? He would give you a little, you know, okay sign from oh, his desk. Yeah. Doing well, and I think the Edinburgh equivalent of that is if Munnery charges the stage <laughs> and swears at everybody and says, "Get the fucking mic out of my face." I think that's <laughs> the equivalent. That means we got his blessing, and therefore Edinburgh's blessing. I think we did well. There's one more opportunity for now. <laughs> there may be more opportunities, but right as of right now, there is only one more opportunity 
to see what we're working on before it's finished. So you'll probably have to wait until March next year, around that time. At, at best, March at, next year, yeah. Best, um, to see the finished thing. Um, if you don't come to the Mockingbird Cinema at the Custard Factory in Birmingham on Saturday the 20th, this Saturday... If you if you listen to this slash watching this, the date goes up this Saturday, Saturday the twenty fourth of August, um, at seven pm at the Mockingbird Cinema. Where can they get tickets, Rob? It is IcemanFilm.co.uk. Correct, correct. Hey. Cost me eleven pounds. That did that that URL cost me eleven pounds. Um, I'll never get that back. I know, mate. I'm, 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 I'm constantly working on a loss. It's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, icemanfilm.co.uk. Get tickets. They're only a tenner. They're only a tenner. Um, get some tickets. Come along. Or, and this is something that uh, a friend of mine, Midlands comedian Jack Kerwin, who plays Gary Poundland. Is uh, is doing, and so it's a suggestion from him. He's famous. Um, is that he can't make it to the show, but he wants to support, so he's going to buy a ticket for him and his flatmate, even though they can't come because they just want to chip in twenty quid. So that's brilliant. Yeah, if you're listening to this and you just want to support us and you can't be bothered to come and see us live, you can just uh, just buy a ticket as a little. Go on, lads. Keep going, lads. Like the equivalent of buying us both a pint. Do you know what I love, Mark? Money for nothing. Money that's for nothing. That's, like. that's what I said to, to Jack when he suggested it. He was like, oh, you know, would it be funny if I just bought some tickets and didn't come? And I was like, mate, a paid-for empty seat is not going to upset me. <laughs> exactly. And by the way, all the money that we make from this will go straight back into the project. This is not for us to roll around naked in. No. I mean, it might be for the first day or two, but we will be spending that money again on uh, making good things happen. So it pays for my trains yeah. down from Scotland. It pays for petrol. It pay, pays for materiel. We need it and it will help us finish it. And we're almost there. We just need a last little shunt over the line, don't we, Mark? Yep. Um, so, yeah, that's so th I, think, I think that's it, Rob. I think we've covered it. I think if you, if you want to come and see this before it's the final thing and you have to wait a, a year um come to birmingham and if you just want to support us buy just buy a ticket and don't come beautiful i have nothing more to say to you or to these people <laughs>